Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John Coleman and I get to speak with John Mariani of the Virtual Gourmet. Virtually. John, good to see you. Um, on the Virtual Gourmet, your newsletter, free, by the way, at johnmariani.com, um, you often uh, talk, in fact, it's a great mix of food and travel and drink. And uh, I want to bring up drink. <laughs> we okay. just bought some tequila. <clears throat> for uh, my son-in-law, nice fancy bottle of tequila. But I, the question I have for you, so what's, te- what's the difference between tequila and mezcal? Basically mm. not much. <clears throat> They're made from the agave plant. And um, most of it is made around Jalisco in Mexico. And <clears throat> the difference is that uh, tequila uses the blue agave which is a species of agave, whereas mezcal does not necessarily have to use that agave. And that's about it. Um, The methods are more or less the same. The plant is roasted, roasted and toasted, and then it is distilled, and uh, then it is aged uh, in a barrel, and um, that's it. Uh, The difference is more a question of uh, preference and um, fashion. Uh, So let's go back a little ways that uh, most Americans had never heard of tequila had it not been for uh, John Ford move, Western movies. You know, they go into a bar and they they just uh, put a bottle of the bar on the bar. And if the movie takes place in the southwestern Texas, it's going to be a clear liquid, meaning it's a tequila. And if it's a brown liquid, it's uh, some kind of rot gut that they're serving in Deadwood. Um, so that's how, you know, and they would do shots. And you'd see this. And this is part of the romance of, of tequila. What pushed tequila into the limelight, of course, was the margarita, uh, an extremely popular uh, cocktail way up there with uh, Manhattans and and martinis and so forth. And margaritas took on uh, a uh, a more than a uh, a fashion through that song. What was it called? Wasted Again in, uh, was it Bourbonville? (laughs) <clears throat> yeah, so, something like that. And uh, Jimmy Buffett's wa- uh, Wasted Away in Margaritaville, a terrific song. And um, believe me, that and Tom Cruise playing a bartender and uh, a bunch of other, the margarita, where you guys come from, um, it's just a magnificent cocktail, frozen or otherwise. And um, so uh, that drove tequila sales, and it was almost always Blanco white tequila. It was almost always pretty cheap stuff. And that's what tequila was for a long time. Well, enterprising people thought we could do more with this uh, this spirit than just uh, have them pour it into cocktails with uh, triple sec. So then they started to release the silver and the, the reposados uh, and the, um, uh, the aged tequilas for sipping, you know, and they would have more color to them. It'd be the same tequila, but it'd be treated and age in a different way or uh, for a longer period of time. <clears throat> and these, you know, called Centenario and Family Reserva and everything. So that took on a certain chic over the years. So there are now people who are tequila drinkers who scoff at the idea of mixing it into a cocktail, um, <clears throat> just as some people would scoff at putting... Uh, scotch together with uh, into a Manhattan, right? So, and, and they are, they're very, very good. Now, as for mezcals, uh, mezcals uh, have only taken on uh, fashion and a much smaller, smaller niche, I would say in the last 10 to 15 years, but now they're getting real big business because they are a niche. So everybody likes to have a one up on the next guy and, uh, um, some tequilas started tequilas started to attach their names to famous people um, like Jack Nicholson and others, uh, country and western stars would attach their names to mezcals and so forth. Okay, now mezcals have been distinguished largely in popular taste, the ones mostly by today, by having a smoky taste. Some a very distinct smoky taste. Um, that is part of the decision of the mezcal maker to make it that way because mezcal, mezcaleros, they call them, the guys who make the mezcal, when I was down in Mexico, did an extensive tasting of mezcals at 
<clears throat> lasted about two hours, but I was out of it for two more days. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> this ancient mezcalero, he was about 106 years old. He said, that's that's nonsense if they have to taste smoky. We want the purity. We want the fruitiness. We want the, the various levels of flavor to come through. And while smokiness can be nice, a light smoke, he says, that's something you do by design and for the market, not because mezcals are always supposed to taste that way. Uh, last point. So if you if you like that smoke, and if you if you like mezcal because it's smoky, then do buy a good one. And now, as never before, you're getting silver reposados and age and yeho mezcals too, which never existed. A lot of the stuff that never existed was created just um, manufactured uh, by large uh, spirits corporations in America who went down to Jalisco and says, we got to sell something new. We got to put it in a, a great looking bottle. You know, we have to say that the Aztec Indians used to drink it this way. Um, most of that is, is nonsense or cooked up. Um, but the last thing uh, that I want to say about uh, all of these is that you can now spend two, three hundred dollars on some of these. It really depends upon how much you want to um, spend on them. Uh, There's basically a distilled spirit, um, which uh, most spirits uh, are uh, by by definition, um, <laughs> but they are have to come from that specific plant, etc. And that, that's that's it. That's what it's all based on, as opposed to, let's say, scotch, which is <clears throat> malted barley and wheat and sure. uh, a number of other factors that sure. go into it, okay? Um, last point, the worm. No, the worm is another marketing additive. Mezcals or tequilas do not, by nature, have a worm, and there's no reason why they should have a worm in them. <laughs> Unless that's uh, somehow in the agave plant, there was a worm that uh, survived being roasted at uh, 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit and turned into a... Uh, a little distillation, but uh, so if you see the worm, uh, you don't see that much anymore. But some people insist on eating the worm itself, and well, good luck to you. All right. Well, I think we ought to save for another conversation how you eat it. You know, is it that the salt and the, in the lime and the or salt you, on the rim, or do you need a knife and fork? And if so, what kind of fork? What kind of knife? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's just the kind of a fun tradition that you do with bars, you know. Um, yeah. it's, it's not a connoisseur's way. I mean, what you're doing is knocking the thing back, okay? That's not the way to uh, appreciate a $100 bottle of tequila. You know what, guys? I think it's time for us to take a break and go have a margarita. Oh, yeah. And sing and dance to it. Yeah, that's the fun. Well, you, you listen, that's the fun of spirits in, in general is all the, what, all the socializing around it with games and let's not get into that that's another issue uh, but i do want to remind everybody it's one of the two drinks that the other one well sangria too but the other one and the bloody marys that should be made in batches yeah yeah um just a reminder before we go john mariani's newsletter is called the virtual gourmet it's free it's available if you go to john mariani.com sign up and by the way, read the newsletter, got back issues, archives, great, great information and opinion and wonderful writing, by the way, John, about uh, food and wine and drink and travel. Uh, you'll love it. And uh, by the way, while you're there, stop over at celebratingact2.com and subscribe. One, one last John, thing about, thank you so much. One more thing about johnmariani.com. Even if you're blottoed, on tequila or anything else that uh, you choose to drink, the the pictures are so lush and so beautiful. It's just a great place just to go look at the illustrations. Illustrations, yeah. Yeah, absolutely stunning. You start reading the Magdalene Laundries yet? The yeah, the chap chapter one, January 2024. Yes. Uh, but but then you, you have to go back because I forgot to read the last two chapters of Harry Wine. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Do, do you have a sup writing? No. I mean, it's just what I do. I get up in the morning and I write like everybody goes to work. Hmm. And we love it, by the way. I do. I really, yeah. you know, when I was seven years old, I wanted to be a writer. Dick and Jane just changed the course of my life. <laughs> 
JohnMariani.com, everybody. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.